want to just extend our ability to graph polynomials that are not cubic. So the polynomials that have higher degrees than just three. And the process, since it's so much the same, I'm really I want to do it quickly and then just draw your attention to what I think is an important thing to notice about the process. So once again, what's the the polynomials in factored form, I can figure out what I need to know about it by analyzing this, uh, the behavior in between the zeros. So one of the zeros is 4. One of the zeros is a negative 2, so I probably should have done that first. Okay, and so now to get this, and so I can put those on my number line. Now, one thing I want to do now that I didn't do before was identify what, what multiplicity is. So, for, for, so negative 2, for instance, is a 0. And its multiplicity means how many uh, how many times that the factor associated with that zero occurs. So this is x plus two cubed, which means if you wrote it out, it's x plus two times x plus two times x plus two. So the factor x plus two has multiplicity three. That's what we say. And the four, the zero of a four, the associated factor is x minus four. That happens twice x minus 4 times x minus 4, so its multiplicity is a 2. There's something interesting that ha that's, um, there's something interesting about the multiplicity of the 0 that determines the behavior of the graph around that 0. So that's something you want to look at as we do this. <clears throat> so again, nothing's different. I'm going to plug in, you know, negative, a number to the left, negative 2, so like negative 3. Now, see that negative there? Don't forget about that. That's like a negative 1. So I really, right from the beginning, I've got to put that down here. Right, that's going to affect the value of our, of our output. Now, negative 3 minus 4 is a negative 7 squared is a positive number. So I've got a negative times a positive times, and then negative 3 plus 2 is a negative 1. And a negative 1 cubed is a negative number, right? A negative times a negative times a negative is a negative. So now I've got a negative times a positive times a negative, which is a positive. Again, this, sec this next interval, I'm going to put that negative down there because of that negative 1. It's going to affect my outputs. And uh, 0 is on this interval, so I'll plug in 0. 0 minus 4 is negative 4 squared is a positive. 0 plus 2 is 2 cubed is a positive. So I've got a Negative times a positive times a positive is a negative. And now I'll plug in 5. So again, that negative comes right from there to begin. 5 minus 4 is 1 squared is a positive. And 5 plus 2 is 7 cubed is a positive. So I have a negative times a positive times a positive, which is a negative. And so if we sketch our graph, it looks like this. I've got the values are positive to the left of negative 2. And then it's a 0. And then it's a 0 at, zero, uh, at 4. And then it's negative. So it's, it was negative in between negative 2 and 4. And then it continues being negative. So there's our graph. And so what, what I want to draw your attention to is the behavior of the graph around the zeros is very much related to the multiplicity. So negative 4 at a multiplicity of 2. And the negative 2 had a multiplicity of a 3. And that was its behavior. And so I'm, I'm hoping that this, you, this came up in class already. But just to formally draw it out, what you'll probably notice is when the multiplicity was 3, the graph crossed the 0. So 
So I'm actually I'm gonna write I'm gonna write bouncer cross B or C for bouncer cross. In other words, did the, did the graph cross at the x-axis at that zero or bounce off of it? When the multiplicity was a two, the graph bounced. And so what you know what's the difference between two and three? Well if you do a couple more examples as we'll see in the next the next slide, it has to do with whether the the value is uh, of the multiplicity is uh, odd or even. And when it's even, it turns out that the function bounces, and when it's odd, it turns out that it crosses. So that's just a, that's kind of another observation that could help you maybe maybe sketch these a little bit more quickly, and check your number line method. So this this method is always will always work. So you should always default to this, but you can kind of double check noticing these other sort of characteristics of the of the graph. And so let's look at our let's look at the M behavior then. Because that's another thing that that's another thing you can determine from the beginning. Um, the limit as x goes to infinity, well, once we have the graph, it's easy to see that's going to be negative infinity. As x goes to infinity, the y values are going to negative infinity. As x goes to negative infinity, the y values are going to positive infinity. Okay, so um, that you can determine from the graph. Um, you could also determine that by... Well, just plugging in, plugging in a really big number. So, like you know, f of f of ten thousand or one thousand would be a really big positive number. If you plug that in, you get a negative. That negative is still there, negative, and then you've got a thousand minus four squared, and then you got a thousand plus two cubed. And again, all we really care about, this is probably going to be a huge number, but is it going to be a huge positive or a huge negative number? Well, that's an, that negative is going to stay out there, so I've got a negative number. This is a positive number, and when you square it, it's even bigger than it was before. And then that's a 1,000 plus 2 cubed, which is positive. So a negative times a positive times a positive is a negative. So that's why as x goes to infinity, it goes to negative infinity. And again, the same reasoning if we used plug in negative 1,000. We get negative, negative 1,000 minus 4 squared times negative 1,000 plus 2 cubed. And if this negative, again, it will always be there, so I'm just going to jot it down. A negative 1,000 minus a 4 is a is a negative 1,004, and when you square that, it becomes a big positive number because it's a negative times a negative. And a negative 1,000 plus 2 is a negative number, a big negative number, and when you cube that, it becomes even bigger in absolute value, but it's going to be negative because you have a negative times a negative times a negative, so it's a negative. A negative times a positive times a negative is a positive, and that's why as x goes to negative infinity, the y values go to infinity. Okay, so this is where, like, this is a place where you want to, you want to have, I don't want to expect any of you to get any of this wrong, because whether you use your number line, sketch the graph, whether you plug in big values, big positive uh, x values, or big po positive, or big negative x values, and do the analysis that way, you should always be able to get this answer just by using your reasoning and not your calculator, Okay. And again, I mean, this is, this number line is the heart of everything here. But you know, the, this is a nice, interesting detail that can help you kind of double check to see if you've, you've done things right. Right? If you've, if things don't go well here, and you notice, oh, the, the the function should have bounced, and it looks like it's crossing, well, then you might want to go check your number line again. Okay. So. Uh, so again, nothing's different in, in terms of what you did in algebra two, except that we're doing higher. Uh, higher degree polynomials, and we're um, asking sort of more more questions like the the end behavior limits.